Here's everything you need to know about the IKEA K1 laser machine. This is a new generation of diode based laser machines. It packs quite a punch with its 36 watt laser array. It is powerful and able to cut a wide variety of materials fast. It features an air compressor assist which means faster and cleaner cuts. You can run programs from a USB thumb drive using the touchscreen interface. You can control the machine from your smartphone or with a PC running Lightburn software. It has a Z-axis motor which gives you one-click auto-focusing and the ability to drop the laser down with each pass, yielding faster and deeper cuts. Compared to other laser machines on the market, it's not the cheapest. However, when you compare the performance to cheaper options, it's easy to see why the iCare K1 costs more. The build quality is excellent with a solid aluminium chassis, and even the air pump housing is all aluminium. If you're looking to upgrade or purchase your first laser machine, this is an easy recommendation. Let's begin by unboxing. As with all my product reviews, no money has changed hands and I'm not obligated to say anything. Inside the instruction manual is a QR code which takes you to an instructional assembly video. The video covers all the necessary steps to assemble the machine. The laser head needs to be set at the correct height. First slide your backboard or cutting bed under the laser head. Loosen the screws on the side of the laser and gently slide the laser down and rest it on the backboard. Now move the z-axis until the arrow points at the 5mm measurement mark. Then you can re-tighten the screws and the laser head is now set at the correct height. To control the K1 I'll be using the very popular Lightburn software. At startup, Lightburn prompted me to scan for new devices. After a few seconds, it found the K1. I selected the front left as the homing position and disabled auto home on startup. First, let's go to the window tab and enable the console tab. And while we're at it, we'll do the same for the Move tab. To use the autofocus feature, I needed to program a macro button under the console tab by right clicking on one of the macro buttons. Then I can give the button a name and write open bracket ESP500 close bracket. To use the autofocus feature, place your material under the laser and then press the autofocus button in Lightburn. The laser will probe the material and then lift the laser head to the correct height to allow for cutting or engraving. 
it's worth noting that soft compressible materials aren't compatible with the autofocus feature. Instead use the measuring block included with the K1. Now I can move on to measuring the offset between the pointer crosshairs and laser. First I'll mark a dot where the crosshairs intersect. Back in Lightburn I'll go into device settings and turn on fire laser. This enables the option to manually fire the laser under the move tab. I set the laser at 7% power and flicked it on for a second to burn a dot into the wood. Now I can measure the distance between the two dots. Back in Lightburn I go into device settings and enable pointer offset and enter in my measurement. I'm also going to enable the z-axis and make sure the air assist is set to M8. And now we're ready to start cutting and engraving. Since the K1 features an air assist compressor I highly recommend buying a honeycomb laser bed which allows the smoke and fine particles to vent away from the laser. This produces cleaner cuts and helps to keep the laser lens clean. This bed made by Xtool uses a steel base which means you can use magnets to hold your material in position. I set up a piece of 6mm MDF under the laser and performed a material cut test. After cutting, three squares were successfully cut all the way through. Based on these results, the optimum settings for cutting 6mm MDF are 10mm a second travel speed, 80-90% to power, and two passes. Next, I set up an engraving test on MDF. Based on these results, you can run this machine at a rather impressive 300mm per second travel while only using 30-40% to power. Now let's put these settings to use. In this setup, I'm cutting a gear from 6mm MDF. The total cut time was 3 minutes 32 seconds. The gear was dimensionally accurate and the cuts were clean. Nice. Now for context, let's compare the cut time to the Xtool D1 10W laser machine. Diode laser cutters are rapidly evolving with every generation outperforming the previous. Since the K1 has 3.6 times the power output of the D1, you won't be surprised that it easily won. However, you might be surprised to learn that although the power output is 3.6 times more, in terms of cutting performance, it's almost 5 times faster. And this is partly due to the air compressor assist. The next material I tried cutting was 4mm black tinted acrylic. After several cut tests, I determined the best settings were 90% power, 10mm per second travel, and three passes. When it comes to engraving settings, 300 millimeters per second travel at 30 to 40 percent power yielded good results. For this cut I enabled z-axis stepping. What this means is after each pass the z-axis would drop down one millimeter. This helps keep the focal point at the optimum height for faster and more efficient cutting. I also tried cutting and engraving on clear acrylic with mixed results. Cutting clear acrylic wasn't happening for me. While it did engrave the front, it also blistered the back with no real cutting action in between. 
However, I was quite pleased with its ability for engraving. Up next, I grabbed some not quite 18mm plywood and programmed the laser to do 14 passes at 90% power at 10mm per second travel. And if you ask me, cutting 18mm plywood with a diode laser machine this fast is pretty impressive. On the list of materials this machine can cut is 0.05mm stainless steel sheet. And although I can't imagine too many applications where such a thin sheet of metal would be useful, I thought I'd see if it can actually cut metal. Technically speaking, yes, this laser can cut metal. However, just keep in mind that an ordinary pair of scissors can also cut this thin sheet of metal. And I don't know about you, but personally I wouldn't call scissors metal cutters. Lastly, I performed three photo engravings on plywood. The plywood was treated with a borax water solution, which improves the contrast for engravings like this. Overall, my time spent using the K1 was a great experience. The cutting and engraving performance is excellent, and compared to my previous laser machines, I really enjoyed the extra functionality the touchscreen added. Being able to run programs without having to connect my laptop every time was awesome. The only technical bug I found was in the smartphone application. When I attempted to connect the K1 to my Wi-Fi network, the app prevented me from selecting a Wi-Fi network. So I was never able to connect the K1 to my Wi-Fi network. However, I could still use the app in Wi-Fi direct mode. So it's no biggie. And I'd like to imagine this bug could be patched in a future update. If you want to help support my channel, there is an affiliate link in the description to purchase the K1. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.